So you just started wholesaling and now you're looking for a business partner that you could team up with and crush the industry together. Or you've been doing this for a while and now you're looking for a business partner that could be the missing link to your company. In this video, I'm gonna give you a few tips on things to look for in your partner, things to avoid when finding a partner, and share a few of my experiences as well. Because I've had the good, I've had the bad, I've had the ugly. Why do you never say the pretty? Thank you guys for tuning back into the channel. Today I wanna to talk about business partners. A lot of people feel it's necessary to have a business partner. Other people feel, I'd rather work by myself. I don't need somebody else to check in with. Depending on how you feel, you may find some value in this video, especially if you're out there looking for a partner right now. Looking for your own partner. I'm gonna give you a few tips which might help you prevent getting in a relationship with somebody who is not a good fit for you, or it may help you get that direct line straight to the type of person you're looking for to help fill those shoes. Please keep in mind, all of these are my opinion, but I feel strongly about them because I've had business partners, especially in the real estate game. The first thing you may wanna look for in a business partner is someone that has high morals. You don't want someone who is out here ready to cut every corner, do people wrong just so they can get ahead. That's not the type of person you want in your team because before you know it, they're gonna be stabbing you in the back, taking your opportunities and skating off by themselves, starting their own business, doing their own thing, or may just land you in trouble because they're out here doing shady business and they'll bring you down. All you have out here, especially in the real estate community because it's so small, is your name. Don't let somebody else mess that up by doing the wrong thing. Another thing you may wanna look for is someone who is the total opposite of you. What do I mean by that? You wanna find someone who can bring in the things that you lack. If you're great on the phones, but you're not good in person, you might wanna find someone who is a strong in-person. You may wanna find someone who has a strong in-person character that can carry on the conversations, that can go on the appointments, meet the people, build rapport, and make everything all happy. If you're great at organizing, but not too good at executing, maybe you wanna bring somebody on the team who is good at getting things done. You can lay out the blueprint, make sure everything is in order, and then boom, they go out there and make it happen because they're great at taking action. You're looking for a teammate that can complete the circle. You may have this half, they have this half. Bring them together, boom, now you have the full circle. Now you have the team, and that's what you're looking for. Someone to help complete the circle. You may not have all the skills, they may not have all the skills, but you put them together, you guys are willing to learn, you can get a lot more accomplished with the right person in your corner. Another thing you may want to avoid is someone who doesn't want to learn. They're unteachable. You do not want that type of person on your team. You want someone who is willing to go to seminars, willing to watch YouTube videos, listen to podcasts, hit the books, do whatever it takes to learn the business, not only learn it, but help mold your craft and become even better at it so you can elevate quicker. If someone's not willing to learn, you should not have that person around. First of all, they don't believe in education. That's bad. If you're the only one learning, the other person is missing out on valuable information and now they have to hear it from you. If you're anything like me, my brain forgets things instantly. I need somebody else there with me that I can bounce this off of. Maybe I remember the first half, I forgot the second half. You bring your partner who is willing to learn, y'all can pick it up together, learn everything you need to learn, and come out here and kill the game. Avoid people who do not believe in learning. Another thing you may wanna watch for is the person's personality. Are they over aggressive? Are they laid back and chill? A reason you may wanna pay attention to this is because sometimes it's hard getting two alpha males in a company together, or females, and they wanna go against each other because somebody feels like they gotta be on top. Somebody has to be the dominant one. And they'll start overstepping the other person because they feel they're right. I'm not saying it will always be that way. I'm sure there's plenty of corporations where two dominant personalities are running the company. But from my experience, when you put two dominant people together, it's not gonna work. They're gonna bump heads. You guys aren't gonna see eye to eye. It may start out cool. You both might be motivated to make things happen, but eventually you might not be able to see eye to eye anymore. You guys are gonna start arguing. And if it's a friend, you may end up ruining a friendship for the long term. I really don't recommend doing business with friends because it could ruin a friendship. But by all means, do whatever you gotta do. Another thing that you might wanna pay attention to is what is this person's ultimate goal? What do they want to do in life? Now, of course, we're talking about real estate, but this can go for any profession. If this person doesn't have similar goals or a long-term commitment to the business, 
It may not work out. Yes, this person may be great. You see eye to eye. They will be a perfect business partner, but yet they don't have the same ambition you have. They don't have the same goals to become a real estate mogul. They want to do something else. And if that's the case, you guys are eventually going to fall out. You're not going to have the same passion. You don't have the same drive. And eventually they're going to want to go do whatever makes them happy. Yes, real estate is making them money. It's cool. Yes, we're having fun together, but my heart's not in it. So now I got to go somewhere else. Now I got to go follow my heart and do what I really want to do. And they're going to leave you holding the bag. It may not be a bad thing. Maybe you're in a position to do so. But you want to make sure you have somebody who is willing to stay committed for the long haul. You guys can grow together. And once you reach a certain point, then maybe you both can branch off and do other things because the company can be set on autopilot. Yes, wholesaling is a business you can set on autopilot and have other people running it. That's the goal you want to get to. But if that person doesn't have that same vision, you might not even want to go into business with them. Save yourself the trouble. Keep a friend and avoid any problems. Expectations is another thing that you guys need to establish from the beginning. Make sure you both understand what's expected of you. What is this person going to do? What are you going to do? What are you bringing to the table? What are they bringing to the table? And what are you guys aiming for? What is the vision that we can agree on together? You want to make sure you don't get into a business relationship with someone and neither one of you knows what to expect. They don't know if they're supposed to hit the phones for three hours a day. You're over here mad like, bro only hits the phone one hour a day. He only makes 30 calls and I don't know what to do anymore. Well, he doesn't know that you're upset by that because you guys never established any expectations. He's upset because you're out here not going on any appointments. You have 15 possible appointments, but you only want to go on one a day because you don't want to be overwhelmed. You didn't know that he's upset at that because you guys didn't establish the expectations. Make sure you talk about what's expected from you, what's expected from them. And if you guys agree, then maybe you're on the right track. If you don't agree from that, maybe you should go ahead and separate, go different ways now. Save yourself the trouble. You don't want someone who is just there to ride the coattail. I've had business partners where I'm the only one doing all the work. I'm making the calls. I'm doing the leads. I'm following up with buyers. I'm doing whatever it takes. They're making money, but they're not putting in that same effort, especially if you guys have an agreement where you're doing a 50-50 split. Here goes your half. Here goes my half. If that's the case, you both need to make sure you're putting in the same amount of work. That does not mean that you have to do the same thing. That doesn't mean you spend three hours on the phone, so he has to spend three hours on the phone. If that's not his strength, then no. Why would you have him do that? You just want to make sure that he's contributing his half. Make sure they're carrying their weight. Otherwise, they're going to carry their ass right out the door. You can't have somebody around who is not willing to work just as hard as you are because they're going to expect the same type of pay you got. But bro, if you ain't working just as hard, I don't know what to tell you. I'm sure I can nitpick and go down a list of different things that you should look for, but those are some strong things that you should definitely pay attention to. The reason I bring most of those up is because I've been through it myself with people where it did not work in the end. I had business partners that were friends. I've had people who didn't work as hard. I had people who might work harder than I do. Sometimes you might be the problem. It's not necessarily your partner. It might be you. I've been in that boat too. Everybody is not meant to be in business together. Everybody is not meant to be an entrepreneur. The quicker you learn that, the quicker you can move forward, the quicker you can accomplish your goals, and the faster you can reach success and all the other stuff. Now, let's talk about some of my business partners. When I first got started, I ran into a guy who I felt might be the best partner ever. The dude was knowledgeable. He was a go-getter. He had goals. He was oriented. He was focused. Met with him one day after he hit me up on Bigger Pockets had a few drinks and we just hit it off. We connected, had a lot of interest, both liked a lot of the same things. So we felt this was gonna be the one. We started hustling and grinding. I had the contract that I got by myself. Then I picked up another contract with him. So boom, we got a contract fast together. I got my first contract by myself pretty fast, but I got another one real fast with him. So boom, now we're working together, trying to sell these deals. Get the deals closed, make some money. He picks up the check. I put the check in his name. Why? We didn't have a company name and I wanted to keep my name clean. I didn't know anything about this business. He felt that he knew a little more, so I trusted him. Went to the bank, he cashed it, came back, not with all my money. He didn't have it all. Said, hey man, some things went on, bro, but I got you on the next deal. I'm just happy you're closed. I'm like, bet, I don't care, bro. I made a little over $3,000. I am happy. Let's work. So we continue to work together. And as time progressed, although we were making moves, getting deals closed, we started bumping heads a little bit because I have a strong personality and so does he. 
Plus, he was a liar, a thief, a manipulator, and a whole bunch of other things. But we'll talk about that later. So we stopped communicating as we once did. Like, it became sporadic. Maybe once a day. Then it went to like every other day. Before you knew it, it was like once a week. So, we had this deal we were working on though, in the midst of all this going on. It was about to be a sub two deal. The owners were behind a little bit on the payments. They didn't want to stay there anymore. They had another house they already lived in. They just wanted to let it go. They wanted us to take over the mortgage payments. After we called up the payments, we were going to keep the property. Mortgage was in their name. We were going to rent it out to somebody else, get a little down payment and make everything work. It was going to be beautiful. Everything was in motion. We found someone who was interested in buying the property. They put down, I think like $6,000. Boom, they were supposed to make the monthly payment. We were gonna make a few hundred dollars difference between what the seller had for their mortgage and what we were actually selling to the other people for. So boom, everything was beautiful. We got the down payment money, or should I say, he got the down payment money. Never saw a dime of it. I'm hitting him up, bro, what's going on? Yo, when am I gonna get that money? Hey man, I got you, man, don't worry. I'm gonna meet up with you. Never met up with him, kept hitting him up. Like I said, we started falling apart because we were bumping heads. We weren't seeing eye to eye anymore. Little did I know he was going behind my back doing his own thing. No morals, you gotta have the trust. My man was out here making sure that he was covered but he wasn't worrying about me. Wasn't worrying about our business. He was focused on his business. As I mentioned, we were supposed to be making money monthly off of the whole little deal that we had. So first month go, no money. Second month go, no money. Mind you, I am calling him every day about my money because I do not play when it comes to the bread. So I'm calling this guy, not hearing anything. Eventually my phone calls start to taper off a little bit. I'm hitting him like every week maybe. If that, like, hey bro, what's going on? To eventually I just stop calling. I said, hey, he's not even worth it. He's not reaching out to me. I'm not getting any money from it, man. Forget that dude. He can have that deal. There's plenty more out here. I started focusing on my business, started closing deals. Things started happening for me in the positive light. Closed my biggest deal at that time, $25,000 by myself. I said, I don't need you, bro. I don't need you. I can do this. So I was happy. A little over a year passed and then I get a phone call one day from a detective saying, hey, do you know such and such? Yeah, I sure do. How can I help you, sir? He said, hey, well, your name popped up during one of our investigations. What you mean? He said, well, do you mind coming down to the station to talk to us? I ain't do anything wrong. I don't have anything to hide. Bro, what's the address? I'm pulling up right now. Send me the address. I pull up. It's a building like in the cut. Nobody else is out there. It's mad dark. I felt scared as hell. I said, bro, this is a setup. This ain't no police station. Nothing's on the building. It doesn't say. It doesn't say police station. It doesn't say criminals welcome here. It doesn't say anything like that. I go inside, it's mad dark in there. They bring me into a room. It's me and two other guys which are sitting in the room. They're looking at me, I'm looking at them. They start asking a few questions and everything like that. Just typical basic questions. How long I've been in real estate. I'm feeding them the information because hey, I don't have anything to hide. Everything sounds great. And then they bring up my business partner. And then they tell me why I'm really here. Now you know, if you're from the streets, number one rule is you do not snitch no matter what. No matter. So they tell me what he did and how my name came up into it. And they said, so what do you have to say? Bro, I told him everything. I ain't holding nothing back. What? Bro, I'm not about to go down for something this man did. What they told me was he took that whole down payment. He was supposed to give some to the seller, some to me. Didn't give the seller anything. You already know I didn't get anything. So he took the money. Boom, he skated. He was gone with it. The monthly payments that he was getting, that he was supposed to be making a mortgage payment, then we're supposed to make that little bit in between. No, wasn't making the mortgage payments for over a year. He kept the down payment. He kept all the mortgage payments. He kept it all. And now the house was going into foreclosure. The seller's out of the house. The buyers have to get out the house because it's going into foreclosure. And they're wondering what part I played in it. Man, I ain't had nothing to do with nothing. Boy, I told him everything I knew. I told him my mama, I told him my daddy, I told him my sister. I didn't care, bro, because I didn't have anything to hide. I had to keep it 100 with him. They said, look, he's also done this to other people. He sold a lady a house, told her put down $10,000. She did, he didn't even own the house. He didn't have the contract on the house. The seller didn't know anything about it. This lady moved into the property. The seller came back a few months later. Who the hell are you? Big altercation, things went crazy. Come to find out, he did it in another city with three other people. That's the type of person you want to avoid, you do not need in your circle. If I knew he was like that from the beginning, he would have never been my business partner. No, sir, we couldn't even been friends. 
but that's the type of thing you need to look for. Long story short, man, I don't know all the details of what happened ultimately, but I know that he was supposed to pay some money back. They were trying to give him jail time. My name popped up because he was out here giving my phone number to everybody. He was trying to bring me down with him, bro. He was dirty all around. Make sure you avoid that type of person, man. They will kill you and your business. I think he paid the money or he was supposed to pay the money. He avoided jail time. Do you know how many people he did wrong and avoided jail time? To me, that, that's just crazy. It made me feel like you can go out here and just be reckless and nothing serious will happen. So you got a slap on the wrist, bro. It's crazy. I don't want anybody to go to jail. I just thought there would be more punishment than what he got. But, you know, salute to you, bro, I guess. Dirty ass. Another business partner I had, man. Now, this was a good guy, man. He had a good heart. I picked up two guys around the same time. One was a partner, one was an employee type situation. This was a guy I went to high school with. He hit me up, he saw I was doing the wholesaling. He said, look, bro, I spent over $25,000 in education and I haven't even closed one deal yet. I was like, damn, bro, for real? Not even one, he was like, no, man. I got close a couple of times, but they fell apart. I said, bet, let's work together, man. I know you, you know me, we got history. You good, I'm good, let's work. We started working. Within 30 days, we closed the deal. $30,000. Bro, he was happy. I was happy because I was able to provide him some value. He was happy because he finally closed the deal and he didn't have to pay me any money. Everybody was happy, man. We even had another dude who was part of that deal. Boom, three-way high five. Everybody made 10,000. We were all happy. So me and him continued to work. We were grinding. We started closing a few deals here and there. Decided to bring on somebody else to start handling our text messages. So he was doing the text messaging. He was receiving a certain percentage. After that, me and the other guy was splitting it 50-50. Before you know it, time progressed, deals were closing, but I started noticing I was the only one doing work. The guy who was doing the text messaging, he was here for a few months, closed a few deals and disappeared. Don't know what happened to him. My business partner started to slowly fade away too. We didn't have any bad blood, nothing happened. Everything was cool, no problems or arguments. We just stopped talking. And before you know it, I was doing every damn thing again by myself. And I'm like, no, this isn't right. Cause we're splitting the checks 50-50. I'm doing half the work, you're doing half the work. That's why we're making half the money, right? No. I was doing 100% of the work and I was splitting half the money with people. It didn't make any sense to me, man. But what really did it for me is when another friend of ours hit me up and said, hey, I heard you and this guy were out here killing it. You're making thousands and thousands of dollars. Man, I wanna be on too. I'm like, all right, cool, man. We can talk about it for sure. You my brother, man. I got love for you. We can do this. He was like, yeah, man, cause he's telling me how easy it is and he's not doing any work, but he's getting thousands of dollars. Wait, what? So he was out here telling other people, hey, I'm making thousands, I'm not doing anything. He's doing all the work, but the money is flowing in. At least that's what I heard. And that kind of upset me. Which brings me to the point, you don't want somebody in your business who's not gonna work as hard as you or who's not gonna add the value that you need to the business because you're gonna find yourself doing all the work, but yet they're gonna have their hands out because they felt like they deserve it. And when I heard that, man, it crushed me, it killed me, it hurt me, and let me know, look, you can't do business with everybody because I knew ultimately he didn't have the same goals I had. He had a different vision. He's still a good dude, still salute to him, man. I rock with him, he's a friend of mine. Not talking bad about him, but everybody's not meant to work together. And that relationship did not work for that very reason because his ambitions were different than mine. My goals was to do real estate. He had his own thing, so eventually we fell apart. Sometimes they can be a great person. They're a grinder, they're ambitious. Y'all have similar goals, but there's just something that just doesn't work. It's nothing against you, it's nothing against them. Everybody just isn't meant to be partners. I know that second one wasn't like as thrilling as the first story, but it just shows you another way of things you should avoid, things you should find out up front. Because if I knew my man didn't have the same visions for the long term, or if I knew better that it was gonna end in our relationship, not even moving forward anymore, like, I mean, like I said, he's still a good dude, but we don't even talk anymore. I haven't talked to him in like a couple of years because of stuff like this. Not because we fell out and we got bad blood, it's just because we just stopped talking. Things need to be established from the beginning so you can avoid these type of situations when it comes to the end. I'm sure there's a lot of great business partners out there. I've had some. I've come to the position where I feel maybe I'm better working by myself but working with others, if that makes sense. We don't need a business together. We can work together. You keep your business, I'ma keep my business, and everybody be happy. 
sometimes that's what it takes. It's just working together with unity, not necessarily forming an LLC and now we have to be tied to one another. Hope you enjoyed my experiences and hopefully you can avoid my experiences so you don't have to go through similar things. My take, business partners are not bad, especially if you can find the right one. I'm still looking for the right one. If you're out there, find me, call me, hit me up. Until next time, people, make sure you stay ethical, stay grinding, stay happy, stay healthy, and stay positive. Keep the faith. God bless you.